Believe it or not, both of us use Mach number. And if you're flying a glass panel equipped Cessna 172, you're using it as well, even though you probably never knew it. You're using it to calculate your true airspeed. Most of us know how to calculate true airspeed using an E6B. It's a bit of a pain in the butt and it can be slow, but since you do it manually, you know the factors that go into it. With a glass panel aircraft, it's automatic and instantaneous, but it's easy to forget about how it's calculated. And it calculates it a little differently than your E6B. So we'll take a look at that, and we'll take a look at the factors that affect it. We'll climb up to flight level 240 so that you can see the density changes. But first, what is true airspeed? True airspeed is the speed that you're actually moving through the air. It's the speed that you're passing by the air molecules around you. But since you can't see those, I like to think of it as the speed that you're passing by the clouds at your altitude. Because both you and the clouds are drifting along in an air mass. We like to think of that as a headwind or a tailwind. But we're really being carried along like leaves on a stream. And that's why true airspeed is the basis for ground speed. So why is it different from indicated airspeed? Your airspeed indicator really doesn't measure speed. It measures pressure. It uses the pitot-static system and the pitot tube to measure total pressure, and then it balances that out against static pressure from the static ports. That leaves you with dynamic pressure, the pressure from movement. And the faster that you move, the more dynamic pressure it reads, and the more airspeed it shows. It's calibrated so that it reads airspeed accurately at sea level at standard conditions. But as soon as you start to change air density, if you climb an altitude, if you have non-standard temperature or pressure, that airspeed indicator isn't showing you accurate speed but it is showing you accurate pressure. And that's why we use it for limitations, for stall speeds and takeoff and landing speeds, because those don't really care about how fast you're going. They just care about how much air is moving over your aircraft. But when we're planning, we want to know how fast we're going. That's how we get to ground speed and estimated time and route and fuel burn. And that's why planning starts with true airspeed. That's why your performance charts use true airspeed. So how do we get from indicated airspeed to true? Your airspeed indicator doesn't actually measure pressure perfectly accurately, especially at slow speeds or when your flaps are down. Because when you're flying slow, or when you put your flaps down, you increase the upwash and downwash over the wing, and that affects the flow of air over the pitot tube. So at slow speeds or at flap deflections, your pitot tube doesn't accurately sense dynamic pressure. That's called position air. You can also have instrument air, airs with the airspeed indicator itself, and installation airs, airs with the plumbing in the pitot-static system. But those two errors in modern aircraft are pretty much negligible. In fact, all of these can be figured into calibrated airspeed. And there's a chart to compute indicated to calibrated in section five of your POH. Once we get to calibrated airspeed, we can convert to true airspeed by factoring in air density. And that's pretty simple. You take your static or outside air temperature in degrees Celsius, over your pressure altitude in thousands of feet. And then you read your true airspeed over calibrated on the disc. But there's one thing that we're not factoring in here, and that's compressibility. When we're flying slowly, the air doesn't change density as it moves around the wing. It just basically gets out of the way. But as you start to speed up, the air actually compresses in front of the wing. It gets more dense. And that can make your calibrated airspeed inaccurate. Below speeds of about 100 knots, that compression is negligible. But when we get faster than that, it causes a problem. When we account for compressibility and calibrated airspeed, we get equivalent airspeed. But there's an issue there, and that is that we can't easily compute equivalent airspeed in the cockpit with an E6B. So if you're flying a slow speed aircraft, as pilots, we pretty much ignore it. And that's where the glass panel comes in. It speeds below about 100 knots. It does the same calculation for true airspeed as your E6B. It takes your pressure altitude from your altimeter, it takes a static or OAT from your temperature probe, and then it looks at your airspeed, and it converts that into true airspeed. But as you start to get faster than about 100 knots, it actually calculates your Mach number, which factors in compressibility, and then it converts that into true airspeed. Okay, let's see this in action. We'll take off from Rocky Mountain Metro at 5,700 feet and climb at a constant indicated airspeed of 125 knots up to flight level 240, and we'll watch how our true airspeed changes. Our altimeter setting on departure is nearly standard, 29.96, so our pressure altitude is only 40 feet below indicated. As we climb through 6,800 feet above sea level, our outside air temperature is 10 degrees Celsius, and our true airspeed is 142 knots. 216, uh, Bravo Delta, Denver departure, radar contact, Denver altimeter 2991, climb and maintain now 12000. 2991, 12000, 216, Bravo Delta. 
As we climb through 9,000 feet, our outside air temperature has dropped to 5 degrees Celsius and our true air speed has increased to 147 knots. As we climb through 10,000 feet, our OAT is 3 degrees Celsius and our true air speed has increased to 150 knots. Number 6 Bravo Delta, climb and maintain flight level 230. Climb and maintain flight level 230, 216 Bravo Delta. And as we climb through 15,000 feet, our outside air temperature has dropped to negative 9 degrees Celsius and our true air speed has increased to 160 knots. As we climb past flight level 180, we set standard pressure, 29.92. Our outside air temperature is negative 19 Celsius and our true air speed is increased to 170 knots. And as we begin to level off at flight level 240, our outside air temperature has dropped to negative 26 and our true air speed has increased to 187 knots. Okay, you can see that as we climb into high altitude, as the air gets thin, our true air speed is much faster than indicated. And people think that's why we like to fly at high altitude. It is the true air speed that we're looking for, but the reason is different. We're not looking for the difference between true and indicated. It's the fact that at high altitude, we can fly at a faster true air speed than we can at sea level. And that's because our drag curve changes. But that's a topic for another video.